uh, take you through uh, some of the details on the cost behind the product planning that went into the car. Ray, thank you very much for putting together an awesome looking car. The first time uh, we had a chance to see it in the design studio, we were really stunned. I mean, the car is just beautiful. It really is tailored and athletic. Um, I think for us, probably, as Michael had mentioned, this, in addition to the K900, uh, really uh, worked together to change the perception of the way people think about the Kia brand. That's kind of the main point of the vehicle. Um, and when we went about sitting to work on the second one, uh, we really focused on five key areas. Number one, the platform. I've got a few slides to talk about uh, some of the details. Performance, the driving dynamics, uh, technology and safety, and then also luxurious amenities. Uh, first off and foremost is the platform. And here, one of the key ideas for us when we developed a premium sedan was really to give it that solid, uh, stable, and firm feeling that you can feel in luxurious cars from other brands. Uh, vehicles that we, uh, we tested vehicles that are up to $75,000, $80,000 to kind of really feel what that, that looks like. And from a design standpoint, and from an engineering standpoint, that really starts with that solid foundation to get that level of uh, sophistication. Uh, from a structural improvement standpoint, we doubled the use of advanced high strength steel. Uh, this is a very important material mainly because it uh, allows us to get strength but also save weight. Uh, so those are two key factors. Uh, we also increased sixfold the amount of structural adhesive that holds the vehicle together. In addition to the spot wells, which are have been known for 70 years, uh, structural adhesives is a new trend going into the marketplace. It does two things. Number one, it helps spread that load across many of the components so that you have a solid feel. Uh, also helps with the crash uh, performance during a, a crash event. Uh, and also we increased, the, tripled the use of uh, the hot stamp steel, which is um, a difficult material to work with. Uh, it changes the shape as it cools and it moves around. And on the diagram you can see here, uh, the areas painted in blue really highlight these materials and how we've been using them. A lot of it is around that, that body shell, uh, mainly for safety, but also to get that rigidity that we need to indicate that this is a premium vehicle. And all taken together is about a 35% improvement in torsional rigidity. And you can feel it today when you drive the vehicle over undulations and rust spots. You can feel how tight and firm that uh, body is. A second part of a premium vehicle, obviously, is to control sound inputs. And here we've done a lot of work to improve the NVH performance of the vehicle overall. And it starts with a triple layer structure of laminated glass on the front door windows, a laminated windshield, and also a 13% increase in insulation in the heat pillars. This is an expandable foam that goes into the vehicle be before it goes through the uh, paint covering or the uh, paint process. As it bakes, it expands and it fills that hollow section up. It's really a, a block on the sound. It's an uh, interesting technology. Also, first time for us, we've used it on the K900, but for the Cadenza, a full underbody pan that goes uh, all the way down the length of the underside of the car. Uh, the benefit here is twofold. Number one, it prevents noise intrusion from underneath the car coming inside. Uh, and also, the second benefit is it improves the coefficient of drag by 0 .005. Just doesn't sound like a lot, but it's equivalent of about uh, a weight reduction of seven kilograms. By reducing the drag, it's equivalent about that, that level of performance. Taken together with another new feature which we refer to as an air curtain, you can see on the diagram here, uh, we, we placed uh, small slits on the lower outside portion of the front uh, fascia that allows air to pass from that high pressure zone when you're driving in traffic uh, on the freeway. It goes through the fascia and it has a twofold benefit. Number one, it reduces that turbulence that happens on the side of the car as the air goes around it, uh, right around the front wheels. And secondly, it creates kind of an air curtain over the surface of the vehicle and allows the vehicle to slip through the air lock uh, 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 much more quickly. Coefficient of drag has dropped from about uh, 0.29 down to 0.28. Um, and more importantly, it has reduced the overall noise intrusion into the vehicle um, and also to the bottom. All right. Uh, also, from the standpoint of the body, there's also we have a great uh, car train story. And here, this is uh, the second iteration of our Lambda 2 series. It's a 3.3 liter direct injected V6 engine. 
Uh, it's been significantly revised from the first uh, iteration, which we applied in the first convention a couple of years ago. Uh, here, uh, optimize combustion efficiency to both improve power, but also reduce emissions. New technology for us, like an electronic uh, thermostat, allows the engine to heat up much more quickly and helps manage the, the thermal load over a, a wider variety of uh, external temperatures. New technology. Uh, and all about 290 horsepower, uh, 253 pounds of torque, 290 is an interesting fact, 257 more horses that we found out from uh, the red-headed Jefferson that we talked to last night. We did the math and realized we have more horses than Jefferson has, so there it is. Uh, also, I think probably another uh, key point that we're very, very proud of, first time an application of a uh, of an eight-speed automatic transmission and front drive application made by OEM. Uh, most of the other eight and nine speeds that are out there have been developed uh, by either Ison or ZF. This is one that was built in-house. So we started with our six-speed automatic transmission that's in the Optima and the previous generation cadenza. Added uh, two more gears, uh, another clutch set. Uh, so basically the idea here is a greater span in ratios from first to eighth gear. Uh, a two-fold benefit here, number one, obviously fuel economy, but also responsiveness in performance. Uh, during a downshift, uh, the engine and transmission together, there's much, much smaller steps because there's more steps overall. So it's quicker to react. Uh, a lot more new technology has gone into uh, shifting as, instead of hydraulic shifter. Uh, we use an electronic servo to uh, perform much more crisp, smooth shifts overall. Uh, it's uh, the first, as I mentioned, the first application that has been developed in-house for uh, an OEM. And overall, it's just a lighter, more efficient uh, package to get in combination with the, uh, with the engines. Uh, overall, the uh, fuel economy ratings, if I can get this thing to work here. Come on. Uh, the overall fuel economy ratio is, uh, is up to, uh, one in the city and one in the combined from uh, to 20 in the city, 28 on the highway and 23 combined. This is the new, uh, in 2017, the EPA te changed its test protocol. So the, the test is a little bit more uh, strict relative to the, uh, the upcoming 16 model year test protocol. On the 16, it'd be about a, equivalent about a, a two mile per gallon improvement. So a larger vehicle, more features, and better fuel economy overall. The other key point that we always make with regards to our durability, and Michael alluded a little bit to it, is the quality standards that we have. This standard uh, test protocol that we have for all of our powertrains is very, very <coughs> extensive. Uh, for what we know, it's usually applied on a commercial type application, but it's equivalent of running the vehicle, the engine, at, at wide open throttle, at full load, at max RPM for 41 days straight. It's about a thousand hour test, and we're capable and able to put about 100,000 miles of wear and tear on the vehicle in just 41 days. It's uh, a, a pretty remarkable test, and it's one of the bona fides that we have to fulfill our 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. And this is the reason we can continue doing that on every one of our vehicles. All right, a little bit about the uh, powertrain, the body of life. Uh, the third component, of course, is the platform itself, as improvements in driving dynamics. And here we have an application that we first introduced in the Optima. The Optima and also the uh, Cadenza share the same platform. We refer to it as our N platform, which is our large FF platform. And here we've introduced a four-point front subframe with large bushings. And the idea here is with an H style pattern, four is more than three. And it gives us one more area that we can control the inputs into the vehicle. It's a very stiff subframe. It's a great foundation to bolt that uh, suspension and steering on to, to so it can do its job. A couple of new technologies. Uh, we've used an extensive use of aluminum components. The lower control, co lower control arm, the steering knuckles are all made from aluminum. It helps reduce the, the weight of the suspension overall by about 40 pounds in total. Uh, technology we've used on some of our other vehicles, we refer to it as amplitude selective damping. And it's basically a two oil path channel. So in certain applications, when the suspension sees a large input, uh, it switches over and uses a different oil channel that helps control the body over our large installations. 
especially with a vehicle this size with large uh, wheelbase that uh, really comes in handy to control body functions. Also brake uh, rotors have increased from about 300 milliliters up to about uh, 320 for improved brake performance overall. And also, uh, for us, uh, another important point of development is a new steering system, uh, completely redesigned uh, for more responsiveness, more control, and also reduced friction. A lot of the components are new. The, the column itself has been stiffened significantly. Um, the, uh, the rack and the pinion itself, uh, the, 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 the mating of those two, the surfaces have been very well tuned to reduce friction overall. Uh, we're using a new processor. It's a 32-bit processor, so it reacts much, much more quickly to overall input. And when you drive it today, you'll feel it. It's very precise. Uh, it's quick-acting. It's a column-mounted system, and we were basically able to just about replicate a rack-mounted performance with a column-mounted motor. So it's quite impressive. Uh, for a wheels and tires, tire standpoint, uh, we have two different sizes, an 18-inch and a 19-inch. Uh, the vehicles you'll be driving today will have to be equipped with the 19-inch tire. It's uh, a Michelin tire that's been specifically designed for the Cadenza to enhance lateral stiffness and also designed to reduce NVH. It's specific for the Cadenza. Uh, the 18-inch uh, the wheel is standard on the, uh, the base grade and also the mid grade. So a little bit about the body, about the powertrain, the steering and handling, and finally, on to the amenities. And I mentioned at the outset, uh, luxury amenities. Interior comfort by far is one of the most important aspects of a car of this uh, caliber and this competition. Um, we're proud to say we have more passenger room than all segment competitors. 107.8 cubic feet of passenger room. <clears throat> then the competitive set includes other large front drive cars such as the the Avalon, the Impala, Chrysler 300 Charger, although the rear drive is still considered the same category. And most of our uh, benchmarking, and also the Toyota Avalon, most of our benchmarking for this category was actually a uh, near luxury car segment up, which was the, the Lexus CS350. So most of our dynamic NVH and performance uh, characteristics were benchmarked against that vehicle. Uh, a couple of other features, uh, we have uh, tremendously uh, roomy interior, but I think more importantly uh, for those folks who are of taller stature, so often times when you get into a vehicle and you get the seat set exactly where you want, you find that there's not enough leg room. Here we've added a new feature, extendable seat, uh, front seat cushions that rolls out so you can get your favorite spot, set it up, and then rolls out for additional leg support. It's a really neat feature. Another point of development, uh, it seems small, but it's an important point in this category. We've heard over and over from our consumers that um, when you're using the seat heaters, after the seat and the interior heats up, often you get a hot spot on the seat. The seat heater gets too hot. Well, we've introduced new technology where it actually, over time, ramps down that heat level, so you don't get those hot spots. So if you turn the seat heater on, you can leave it on all day because it'll drop down to a lower temperature, which is uh, quite a neat feature. Uh, expanded front seat cushion ventilation zone, you can see on the diagram here, uh, heated front seats and rear seats, uh, and ventilation in the front. We've expanded it all the way out to the edge of the cushion, and on the seat back it goes all the way out to the bolsters. Uh, it's a uh, quite a large area, and especially on days today, you'll be able to enjoy that. Also, a new feature for Cadenza, uh, if you're traveling with uh, small children in the back, you know they sit a little bit lower in the seat, and because of the angle from where they sit, you know, they often get exposed to a lot more sun than folks in the front. Uh, front seat passengers, of course, have sun shades that they can deploy. Well, on Cadenza, we've added retractable side sunscreen. So you can lift those up. They're small boats. You can place them on the top, block that sun out. You can still see through it, um, but at the same time, block that sun, which is a, a real neat feature. All right, a little bit about the features. Uh, also, from an amenity standpoint, uh, we're introducing technology that we first introduced on the new Optima last fall. Uh, in conjunction with our partners at Harman Kardon, we've added uh, a new premium audio system. It's 12 speakers with quantum logic surround sound, 630 watts, and also clarified music restoration. Now these are two technologies that are very, very impressive. 
if you have a chance, uh, I encourage you to seek out Kevin from Harmon. He's here. He'll help you demonstrate some of this technology. If you're not familiar with it, Clarify really helps expand uh, the digital music that we often listen to, which is in compressed format. It helps restore some of that fidelity that we lose when you compress the sound. And then in conjunction with the quantum logic sound, it creates this very nice uh, setting, this kind of imagery uh, and sound stage that you can help uh, monitor how you interact with the music. And it's very, very impressive. If you have a chance, make sure you seek him out to, uh, for a demonstration. Also, we're introducing the third generation of our UVO infotainment telematic system. Uh, this one has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay standard on every cadenza. In addition, we have a new uh, color heads-up display, which is a cadenza first. Uh, this is a display that's right in front of you. It displays on the windscreen. Uh, it shows the road speed that you're traveling, but more importantly, the speed limit also is displayed along with it. Um, if, you're, if you have a destination programmed into the navigation system, it will also display the next turn right there on the window in front of you. So turn by turn right there on the screen, you can see on the diagram. Also, a blind spot detection, if you have a vehicle approaching you from either the left or right, it will show, show you right there on the screen. So it's a lot of information right there from the, in front of the driver. Uh, also, wireless smartphone charging using the key uh, protocol that's also available on Fenza. Uh, surround view monitor system, three times the improvement in resolution over the outgoing car. And also, smartphone technology, which we introduced on some of our other cars. If you're if you've got luggage in your hands or cargo, uh, you stand in the back of the vehicle with the key fob in your pocket. The vehicle detects it, and in a few seconds, the deck that opens up. For us, this is a smart solution is to have them stand in the back of the vehicle and wave your foot underneath the bumper trying to find uh, the ideal spot to get it open. So it's really neat technology. Also, on the mid-grade and upgrade, there's an 8-inch LCD instrument cluster. Uh, the second half of the technology story, in addition to the infotainment technology, is the available advanced driver assistance system. And here we have the latest technology uh, that we're rolling out on the new Cadenza. Advanced smart cruise control that has the capability of coming to a full and complete stop. Uh, for instance, in stop and go traffic, it will follow the car in front of you and it will maintain that gap if traffic stops, it will stop and it will take right back off when traffic picks up. Uh, new for, uh, this is a Kia First, we're introducing new technology called Smart Blind Spot Detection. And here, if you're merging into a different lane and there's a vehicle in your blind spot, the system uh, will notify you by breaking the opposite side, outside tire wheel, basically giving you a nudge back into the lane. So if you put on your turn signals, you're moving over and there's someone over there, you'll hear a beep, obviously, It'll illuminate, but it'll also give you a quick little tug on the, on, the, on the wheel to get you pulled back over into your lane. It's neat technology. Uh, front collision warning, high beam assist, lane departure warning, nine airbags, including a driver's side airbag. And overall, we're targeting uh, NHTSA five star and an IIHS top safety plus pick rating. We don't have the final scores yet. Obviously, they have the test us to provide it, but uh, this is what we targeted during, uh, during development. A little bit about the technology, the powertrain, uh, a great design, uh, an overall uh, sophisticated ride. Uh, similar to the previous cadenza, we're going to go to market with three different trim sets. Uh, the first one is the premium grade, uh, starting at below 32000 We don't have final pricing yet. We're still working on that. Uh, but uh, the target is to be about $1,000 less than the starting price on the outgoing car, which is pretty impressive if you think about all the work and technology and expense that has gone into the vehicle. Uh, the middle grade, which we refer to as the technology grade, starts at around uh, 39000 which is about a $4,000 difference from the outgoing car, in addition to all the value we've added to it. And the top model, the one that you'll be driving today, is the SXL, the limited model, starting at a, uh, below 44000 Now, all of these prices are, uh, there's an additional 895 participation charge. Uh, but I think one of the other key tenants Michael mentioned at the outset is value. It's always been an important uh, component of our vehicles. Uh, we have a few examples here of some features that will have the lowest price in the marketplace. Wide spot detection with rear cross traffic alert is priced below all of the competition. Standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as I mentioned earlier, across all.
all the good ends, and then also a premium audio available at the lowest price in the segment. So all in, it's a great looking vehicle with great technology, um, and also uh, on, it'll start production probably later this month and will go on sale probably towards the end of October or towards the uh, first part of November.